Hello everyone and welcome to another video in this channel. Today we're going to be modeling this shield right here. I'm going to guide you through the whole process inside of Maya. I'm going to be showing you some very cool tips and tricks to get this. So let's go. Very well. So we're inside of Maya. And of course, the first thing we need to do is we need to set our project or create our project if we're starting something new. I got my Ableal 3D right here and I've just set it up. I'm going to press the space bar and I'm going to go to the front view and I'm going to go to view, image plane, import image, and we're going to import our shield in. Now, this image is not centered, so I'm going to center it right here. First thing that we're going to do, someone in the comments told me that he would like to see a full process of something from Maya all the way to Unreal. So I thought this could be also a good opportunity to show that. So the first thing that we need to understand about Unreal and Maya is that Unreal works in meters and Maya works in centimeters. So I would expect this shield to be at least one meter like tall. So I'm going to create a cube and I'm going to change the scale of this cube to 100. That's roughly, or not roughly, that's 100 centimeters. Therefore, that's one meter. And if we go to our front view again, I'm going to be able to scale this up so that the shield measures roughly that size. We can later on like scale it a little bit more appropriately. But right now, I think this is a good, a good measurement. So there we go. We don't need this cube anymore. I'm going to delete it and I'm going to push this thing up so that it's on top of the floor. Now, the first thing I do whenever I start sculpting or modeling anything is I like to analyze the concept. Like, what is this concept? How many pieces do we have for this concept? And how are we going to approach these pieces? So I can see in this case, one piece right here, three, two, three, four pieces, five pieces, six, seven, the whole border, and then the planks are going to be eight pieces. So don't try to model everything for a single block. That's the first advice I'm going to give you. And I'm going to be giving you a lot of advice. So make sure to continue watching this video. So uh, let's start probably with the easiest thing, which is the planks right here. There's a million ways in which we can model them. I'm going to show you a nice little workflow here. So I'm going to go to my mesh tools and I'm going to go to create polygon. I'm going to start here on the center and I'm going to click on where I see the borders of the planks like finishing. So it's like right around there, there, there and there there's going to be a little bit of overlap that's fine and yes i know what a lot of you guys are going to be saying is like that's an angon we hate angons we don't like angons and you are right but we can fix them and we can fix them fairly fairly easy so first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to say mesh display and reverse so that the face is looking at me and with the cut brush i'm gonna just like unify this little vertex right there there we go there we go and i'm gonna go back to vertex view and just make sure that these guys are aligned as possible or as close as possible to the lines that the woods are supposed to be um, representing. This middle section is right here. I'm going to scale them so they're perfectly flat. I'm going to snap them to center. I'm going to turn on the grid just for a second so that we can snap them right there on the grid. There we go. And then I'm going to grab this guy and this guy, and I'm going to say edit mesh. And, or sorry, uh, yeah, let's just bevel them. I'm going to bevel them a little bit. The reason why I'm going to do this is because I want to have a very like small uh, bevel very, very small bevel. And then I'm going to delete that face. So grab both faces and delete them. And now we have the three planks of our wood in a single element. Now I'm going to grab the object again. I'm going to press control E to extrude this. I'm going to extrude this out a little bit to give this, you know, the thickness that we would expect this woods to have. So I would say roughly around there. I'm going to grab the object now and I'm going to say a bevel to the whole object, which is going to bevel every single corner, as you can see right there two segments and a small fraction. And that is going to give us a very, very nice like wood effect. Now, of course, on the shield, we don't see any separation between the elements. That's why I'm going to go to my move brush. I'm going to select that face right there, press W. And with the letter B, which is soft selection, I'm going to go to the options here. And on the soft selection thing, I'm going to change this from a volume to surface. By default, it's set to volume. I'm going to change this to surface so that the only faces that are like on the same island are going to be modified. Let's go to the front view. And I'm just going to push this so that it touches or barely touches the corner on the other plank. Same thing for this one. Grab that guy right there and just like move them a little bit. And there we go. And the reason is I want to be able to smooth this thing and I don't want to see the separation or at least the separation should not be as visible. So as you can see, still a little bit of separation there. I'm going to grab the other face on uh, this guy right here. Oop. This is one of the problems that you get when things are very close together. I'm just going to grab this whole thing and just push them a little bit closer together. And then this guy right here, I'm just going to scale it, to be honest. There we go. Again, when we press number three, as you can see right here, 
we shouldn't see that much of a difference. If it's a little bit too much, just tweak it around, move it around. Overlaps are not bad. A lot of people like give overlaps a bad rep. Overlaps are not bad as long as you do them like properly. So it's perfectly fine to have this thing. If it looks good, then uh, then we're good. So yeah, that's it. Now I'm just gonna grab the whole thing. Shift, right click. Let's close this. Shift, right click, and we're gonna go to um, a mirror. We're gonna mirror this on the X and negative axis based on the world, but we're not gonna merge the objects. So do not merge borders. Uh, we do wanna combine, but we do not wanna merge borders and hit apply. And this is what we should get. So yeah, that's pretty much it. We get a very nice like shield right here. And uh, later on at the very end of the video, so stay tuned, I'm gonna be showing you how to bend this so that we have a very nice uh, shield. Now let's go for the border of the shield, which is this part right here. I'm gonna grab this object, Delete history, center pivot, phrase transformations to keep it clean. Remember, in Maya, this is a workflow that you have to do all the time. I'm going to call this planks. And I'm going to press H to hide. Now, on this border right here, I'm going to capture this whole thing. And I'm going to be using, again, the quattro. So I'm going to go mesh tools, uh, create polygon tool. I'm going to create one polygon right there. And then with the quadro tool, I'm going to start drawing points and continuing this thing right here let's get rid of soft selection by pressing b now very important this is one of those things about topology that people tend to like mess up we don't want in this particular case the topology to be flowing nicely around the corner because this is a sharp corner and usually when you have sharp corners what we want to have is this behavior right here like that okay so instead of having a round corner that follows the silhouette of the shield, we actually want to have a straight corner that does not follow the silhouette because that's going to give us a very like clean cut right there. So sometimes you will have an edge loop that, that follows the whole silhouette and sometimes you won't. You need to, to, to learn when each of those situations is going to be. So for, most part, for the most part of this shield, we're not going to have that sort of stuff. Now over here, I'm just going to try to guesstimate the rest of the thickness. I'm going to try to keep the, the thickness as consistent as possible. Here you can see another sharp corner. So let's just capture that sharp corner right there. All the way over here. Another sharp corner right here. As you can see this, I, I know those look a little bit weird, but they're perfectly fine. There we go. Now I'm just going to grab that vertex right there and we can like scale it on the Y axis, uh, it's perfectly flat. Same for this one. I'm gonna make this gizmo a little bit smaller. This one's we scale them and we snap to the center. Perfect. So now we got this very nice, um, like a border going around our, our element, this thing right here, and that we need to give it thickness, right? So the easiest way to give this thickness is just control E and push this forward. Now I'm gonna bring my planks back because I do need to see the planks and see how thick I want this to be, which right now I think this is a, a, good, uh, a good amount because when we center the pivot point, if we go to the side view, we can snap this to the center of the grid like this, and that should give us enough like room on the front and on the back to like hold this edge. Now, um, I do feel like a bevel could be a good idea, so I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna first insert an edge loop right there down the middle, and I'm gonna delete the back part of this thing so that I don't have to do double the work. And I'm gonna grab all of the borders like this, Gotta be very careful here following the edge loop. So you can see this one follows very, very nicely. And then here, we actually don't want this face. So let's go back to edge. So it's that one, that one, going all the way to the top. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. And we're gonna bevel. I'm gonna give two segments in a small fraction. And as you can see, that bevel that I just added there is gonna allow me to have a relatively smooth corner for the whole thing. If you want to have something that's a little bit more like stylized, kind of like a World of Warcraft style, you might want to keep this at a one segment like that, play a little bit with the fraction, and then do the insert edge loops here, even though we have a triangle. Triangles are not bad. They, again, get a very bad reputation, but they're not bad. You could even give this to, like, give this two segments and just on the depth change it to zero, and that way the depth is going to be completely flat, so you're not going to have, like, the round corner, and now there's no triangle. So both of those options work really, really well. Now, the next thing we need to do to sharpen this piece a little bit more is add some support edges. For instance, one right here, it's going to keep this very sharp, one right here, and one right here. And all of those that I'm adding, as you can see, are going to help me hold this edge 
a lot nicer. We call these things support edges. I'm going to make a video very, very soon about the different types of topology that you can find in the 3D world. And um, if you want to make sure to get the notification when that goes live, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Over 70% or 75% of you guys are not subscribed. So help us out with a little subscription down here on the, on the button. So I'm going to start adding more uh, support edges on all of the sharp angles that I want. So all of these guys right here, all of these guys right here, right here. And as you can see, that's going to like hold the edge very, very nicely. We're also going to need to add one right there. And uh, we already have the other one right there. So as you can see, that holds the edge very nicely. And over here, we might need another one right there, depending on how sharp you want the corner to be. Now, this is not for games. I'm, I'm, I'm using something called the subdivision uh, modeling approach where we focus on making sure that this thing subdivides nicely and that's why we get all of the support edges. Some people might be wondering why are we not using things such as crease, for instance, that allows us to have sharp corners without having to add this. And the problem with creases is that they don't work like perfectly fine in other softwares sometimes. So I personally prefer to model my stuff with this subdivision approach. So there we go. Look at that super, super clean border here for our whole uh, shield. Now, I do feel like it's a little bit thin on this side. So I'm going to go to the front view and I'm going to grab all of this vertex. And I'm just going to take a little bit of an artistic decision here to to make this thing a little bit wider. because otherwise it looks just a little bit weak. So let's start like playing a little bit with this with these angles and uh, yeah that should help now on this one as you can see we're definitely gonna need another edge like right around here and move these guys down again so that when we smooth we don't get any issues on the on the wood itself of course we're gonna have to do another mirror to replicate that effect now this one is also gonna be mirrored so shift right click we're gonna mirror but this one we do want to merge border vertices at 0 0.001 very important and hit apply what that should give me is a perfectly nice border going around the whole shield. And now another thing we can do is we can go into the mirror options and we can change the world from X to C, negative C, so that we get the back part. And uh oh, we got a little bit of an issue. Why is this happening? Well, it's happening because if we go to the right view, this thing, as you can see, it's not perfectly aligned to the world. So I'm going to go to the center right here. I'm going to snap it to the world. And that, of course, means that I need to grab the wood. I'm going to center the pivot point. And if we go to the right view, I also need to center this to the world itself, which is right there. Now we can press shift right click and mirror this on the world negative Z axis. And that's going to give us the nice border there for our shield. Perfectly good place to save. So let's call this a shield before anything bad happens here inside of Maya. Now let's keep on moving with the little um, shield that we have here on the top. Now, this little shield is very interesting because it has a slightly different approach to the whole thing. First of all, we have a center line. So that tells me that when we see it from the top, this thing should be a little bit like this, right? So there should be some, some change in direction. But that doesn't mean that we need to change anything on the... Um, on the topology. Topology is going to be very, very similar as well. So I'm going to hide both elements and I'm going to go again to mesh tools and I'm going to create a polygon. So just a single polygon right there. There we go. And with Quadro, I'm going to start drawing my polygon. So when you're drawing polygons and when you're drawing a shape such as this one, I feel like this guy's a little bit off center. Give me one second. I'm just going to grab this. Just a tad. There we go. So when you're drawing this, we need to, again, think about the corners, like what kind of corners do we want on the different sections? And I know that down here and up there, the corners should be very, very sharp, but there's a little bit of a curve here. And whenever we have a curve, we want to capture that curve with at least three polygons like this, at least. If you can do a little bit more, that's always going to give you a, a slightly rounder corner. So in this case, I'm going to do four. And as you can see, we capture the curvature of that little hook right with these faces. We fill in the rest of the elements, keeping them clean. And now I always like this sort of like retopology challenges because it's kind of like a puzzle. You need to figure out how to fill all of this in without adding too many faces. And in this case, this is the solution right here. If you want to pause the video, I'm going to leave it here for you so that you can see exactly the like the silhouette I'm using. I'm pressing shift here to relax the topology a little bit so it's a little bit cleaner. And uh, yeah, this is the object that I need. So I'm just going to grab this point right here snap them together this one's as well let's snap them together so they're perfectly flat and uh, that's pretty much it so we're gonna grab the whole object i'm gonna control e push it forward and here's the fun part i'm gonna rotate it 
Okay, so why I while I push that forward, I'm rotating the piece so that we get that sort of like incline effect that we have here on the little shield. So how far should I rotate this? Well, it's going to depend, of course, on this guy's right here. But I would expect this guy to be like, oh, let's go to face mode. So I, I think the, the inclination is fine. Let's just grab the faces real quick. There we go. Make sure you're not grabbing anything else. And from the top view, I'm going to push these guys so that they're pretty much at the same distance as everything else. And then all of these guys right here, I mean, we got a couple of options. Uh, I think it's going to be flat on the back, to be honest. So I think the easiest thing right here is, would be to grab these guys and just extrude the faces back like this. So they're perfectly flat on the, on the other side of the shield. Now that we have this piece, we need to delete this inner faces that we have right here. Why? Because we're going to be doing the mirror. And if we have those faces, we're going to have non-manifold geometry in between. And that's something that we do not want. That's a way or something that we should always try to avoid. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it for this one. Now, of course, if we, uh, we need to do some uh, beveling. So I'm going to grab all of these guys right here. Very important to grab these little corners all of these corners and this one's right here so yeah that looks good we're gonna do bevel a relatively big fraction like close to this one two segments but zero depth so that it's perfectly flat there we go and then we're gonna do a mirror on the x negative world now, as you can see, we got a little bit of an issue here. What's happening? Well, what's happening is that for some reason, the vertices are not perfectly lined up with the grid. So I'm going to grab all of these vertices, scale them on X together. And then by turning on my grid, I can press X and make sure that they're perfectly flat against the ground. Once we have that, we should be able to do the mirror on the X negative axis. And there we go. Now for the support edges, because if we press number three, you can see that this looks very, very uh, soft. We need to go to our cut tool or any any tool that's going to be doing some sort of like addition. Wow, that's a problem. Look at that. So the problem that we have right there is that there seems to be a couple of end guns right there. I don't know why this happens. The the mirror tends to do it every now and then. So I'm just going to delete those vertices. And uh, you can notice that I figured out that there were uh, end guns right there because the loop cut was not flowing properly along the, the edge loop. So I'm going to add one edge loop right there. There's another pair of angles right here. There we go. This guy and this guy. Let's make sure on the bottom we don't have them. I think that's it. There's other tools to, to find angles, by the way, such as the such as the um there's another one there, another one there. My god, so many angles. I don't know what it is. That that's actually one of the things that I don't like about the mirror function here instead of Maya. It tends to add a lot of uh, angles. So there we go. We're going to add one line right there, one line right there. Mm -mm 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 -mm. That's going to give us very sharp looks pretty much everywhere. One line right there. Uh, for this little hook, I think one line right here is uh, like a good idea. Yeah, um, no, that's that's a little bit too much. We already have enough uh, geometry right there, but maybe one line right here might not be a bad idea. Yeah, that's a little bit better. So yeah, that's it. We get a very nice effect right around the whole thing. And of course, the, the most important one is the one on the center. For that one, I am actually going to use the offset edge loop, which is this one right here, which is going to add two lines on, down the center. And there we go. Now, uh, we changed the scale of the object a little bit, and that's why it looks a little bit weird right now, because we we have this thing. Another thing that changes the, the flat part on the back, meh, not really that much of an issue. So what can we do here? To be honest, easiest thing would be to just grab these guys and push them closer, and then mirror this to the X negative. There we go. So to make sure that it, uh, it falls into place. So now, there we go. We got the frame, the base, and the little shield right there. Let's go with the next element. Actually, let's go with the simple element. We got the little spheres right here. That's such a simple thing that it might as well do it already. So I'm just going to add a sphere. And I am going to rotate the sphere so that the pole is looking at us. This is mainly for UV purposes later on. I'm not going to be texturing it right now on this, on this video, but let me know in the comments if you want me to show you how I would UV and texture this element, and I'll be happy to do so. And that way I'm also going to know who's watching the video all the way 20 minutes in. Which, by the way, thank you. Thank you for watching this. Hopefully, all of this information is good for you, my friends. 
So, and now that we're talking about commercials, don't forget that we also have our Discord channel where you can share all your stuff. Who knows, maybe if you share the, the Finnish um, shield, we might be doing some sort of like giveaway or something. I don't know, not not planned yet or anything, but if we, there's enough submissions, I think that could be something something cool. So yeah, that's, uh, that's the spheres right there. So I'm just gonna grab all of them and I'm gonna combine them. And I'm gonna press shift, right click and mirror to the others, to the, uh, again, X negative side. And that's gonna give us the little like divots right there. Uh, of course, I'm gonna grab everything, delete by type history, center pivot, freeze transformation to make sure everything is clean and very important, name things. So I'm gonna call this upper shield and these are gonna be called bolts. Cause otherwise this just becomes a mess, like cube one, cube two, cube three, like in the production pipeline, no one's gonna know what the hell you're talking about. So let's go to this center right here. And I think the, the most like, or one of the trickiest thing is the center like shield. We got the arrows that I think are underneath the shield. So let's do this shield first. And of course the, the easiest shape to do this with would be a sphere. So I'm gonna start with a sphere right here. I'm gonna rotate this 90 degrees towards me. And I wanna see if 20 sides for the sphere are enough to to like match the little pointy starts that we got right there. As you can see, they're not really falling into place. So they're like on the, f they're not exactly on like fourths. It's it's a little bit more than fourth. So I think we're gonna need uh, like 24 sides. So we get one, two. Yeah, 24 seems to be the, the closest, I think. And we're gonna get uh, this edge right here. And then this edge right here and then this edge right here and this edge right here. That to me looks like the closest option. I guess we could go to like 32 or something, but that's gonna be a little bit too much. Let's try 32. No, we can go lower, 18, 40. 40 gives me something again, a little bit closer. But it's not perfect. And usually you don't want to work with very like high like uh, amounts of elements. Let's try 24 again. I think 24 was probably the closest one. Uh, I'm not sure if rotating this like a specific amount, like five degrees or something is going to give us. Now we're going to go out of a uh, center line. So let's keep it at zero and let, let's work with this. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to change the subdivision heights to like 20 or maybe even like less, like 16, so it's a little bit easier to manage. And what I wanna do is I wanna delete all of the, the parts here on the back. Now, from the uh, reference, I see that this is not really a disc that's like pushing out too much. Of course it's pushing out, but it's not like like extreme, right? Like this, this is way, way too much. So I'm gonna use my scale tool to bring this down into something a little bit more manageable. So I would expect it to be roughly around there. It's gonna be, of course, on top of the planks like that. Uh, now, if we go to this lines right here, as I've mentioned, we're gonna grab, let's say, um, this one, I'm actually gonna go, it's one, two, three, it's the fourth, one, two, three, it's the fourth. So those are the, like the lines right there. And then we got this one right here, which is again, one, two, three, and it's the four, one, two, three, and it's the fourth. So that those are, again, probably the, the closest lines that we have. And what we need to do here is we need to find this little dip that we have. So I'm gonna grab all of this vertex right here this one's right here, this one's right here, and this one's right here. And since the center is right there, we should be able to scale in, as you can see, and uh, and get a proper shape. Like we get the, the proper depth of the of the little triangle. I know it's not matching the concept perfectly, uh, but we're gonna get the, the idea of the whole thing. And then, uh, of course, what we can do is that now I know that this is a, a like um, radially symmetrical element. So if we delete four of those guys, we should be able to play around with uh, this guys over here. For instance, I'm gonna try to to push this guys closer like that, and this guys closer to try to keep this as balanced as possible and capture that specific shape. So when we number three, as you can see, we get that effect. Now on the actual element, we got a little border which I would say is uh, this line right here. So I'm gonna bevel that line, bevel, a small fraction. And of course, the, the points of these things are, are really sharp. So we need to find a way to make this a little bit sharper. There's also another um, line on this guy right here. So I'm also gonna bevel it, small fraction. There we go. 
And now, uh, there's a lot of ways to, to bevel this or to, to make this a little bit sharper. I'm gonna show you one that I really like. So I'm gonna push this vertex forward and then this edge right here, but only the this lines up, up until this point, I'm gonna bevel them. So I'm gonna bevel them, small fraction, and then this point right here, I'm gonna collapse to center. And what that will do is it's adding a, a little bit of a pinch on that area, as you can see right there. And we can do the same thing on this guys and this guys right here. So we bevel those, small fraction, and then this element so that we don't have an angle, we just triangulate them. So as you can see, what that's gonna do, it's just gonna sharpen that specific part right there. And it gets close to the sort of like triangular effect that we're looking for right there. Another option, I am not particularly in love with that one, but I might do it here on this first one, I'm gonna collapse that, is to uh, just add some support edges. So I'm gonna go to the triangles right here and delete them. And uh, we can grab our mesh tools offset edge loop tool and add another line right here. But the problem with that line is, yes, we're gonna get a very sharp effect right there, but it's also gonna go all the way into the center of the of the circle. That's why I I'm, don't find particularly useful because it, um, it breaks the sort of effect. So I think, I think I'm gonna go with the original pitch, this one right here. And then what we can do here is we can um, delete this triangle, add another line right in the center right there. And then this is a square, so we just fill it. And that's also going to give us a slightly like more intense pinch right there. So it's uh, it's topology tricks, topology elements that we can do. We could even add or like finish this triangle right there. So it's two triangles. That's perfectly fine as well. And it's gonna it's gonna give us a slight like weird pinch right there. But again, it shouldn't be that bad. Um, and I think once we add this uh, border right here, which is this one, Control E, I'm gonna extrude up give it a little bit of an offset, push it down. We're gonna have to clean this line right here and this line right here. And then we're gonna have to add some support edges, one there and then one there. That's gonna make it look a lot nicer. And that way we keep the very like nice round effect right here without affecting uh, this part right here. Uh, again, if we want to, we could also, I'm going to show you another trick here. Let's delete this faces for just a second. And we're going to insert one edge loop right there. Actually, we don't need to even erase those faces. We're just going to insert one edge loop right there. And another one right here. And then with my knife brush, we can go from that point to that corner. And we can go from that point to that corner. And that's also gonna give us a very nice, clean, sharp effect without going or affecting the uh, the roundness, uh, so to speak, of the disc. We could also grab this one right here and play a little bit with the, with the proportions. This is more traditional poly modeling to try to minimize the pinching as much as possible. So yes, there is gonna be a little bit of pinching there. But again, it's, uh, it's part of what we need to to like get this. If we want to have like a super, super clean one, we would need a lot more resolution. That's unfortunately the um, the issue with this type of, um, of projects. Another thing we could try, let me try it just very quickly and see how it looks. Another thing we could try is to minimize the triangle and keep it really close to the border right there. So I'm gonna like merge to center, but that usually gives me a very weird effect. Actually, that's way better. So let's push this triangle closer to the edge. I'm a little bit like hesitant about what's gonna happen there. Yeah, see that? So, so it's it's a little bit better on, on the side ones, but on the front one, I don't think we're gonna need it. So let's try having it right there. There we go, that looks a lot better, I think. That's a lot, a lot better. Because yeah, we, we can't really push this ones right here. We could try to push the border just a tad bit out, and that should help relax it a little bit. But to be honest, I kind of like the, the pinch right there. It makes for a more interesting shape as well. Now on this one right here, I'm gonna grab this circle. I'm gonna control E, push it in, and then give it a little bit of offset as well. This one, we're gonna delete and delete. And we're gonna grab this guys, this guys, and this guys. Oh, 
all of the edge loops right there and we're gonna bevel and that's it front view let's grab all of the vertex here and scale them so they're perfectly flat against the grid same on this one's right here scale them perfectly flat should be perfectly flat against like the grid and then what we're going to do here is we're going to do a mirror world x uh, negative apply there we go and in this case i'm going to do bounding box y negative because we're not on the world the world is uh, down here so we need to use a bounding box and that's it we get this very very nice effect here for our element now i can see that this thing is pointy the the center is pointy so what we can do here is we can delete this edge just a second grab this element right here and push it a little bit more out like that and that's going to give us the sort of like sharp effect and then if we want to like make that a little bit like harsher we can go with our cut tool and just add one line on the very tip of the of the whole thing so that's going to be that that's going to create that the pole that we have right there for the shield and here's where you can decide how much you want to like push this out or not depending on the on the type of uh, width that we have another final thing that i would recommend is going here to the border Control e i'm going to scale this just a tad bit in and i am going to give this a bevel on the side just so that it looks round and then when it sits on top of the of the wood it's not just like a flat surface it's uh, actually like a nice little like round effect right there we could also split this into multiple meshes right now uh, i did model everything as a single mesh so if we were to split this we might be able to get away with this cut a little bit better uh but again i think this looks uh this looks nice at the cut is not or the pinch is not that bad that bad it looks fine it's following the curvature of the object so i like it now uh finally we're onto the last part the arrows and the arrows are very easy to do so in this case uh, this arrow is uh, again just like a traditional model so i'm gonna go mesh tools create polygon and we're gonna create one polygon right here it's gonna be a square polygon very important of course and with quadra one of the things that i want is i want to create in this case a nice loop going down the center so we're gonna go down the center and then here on the side, we got another like little curvature, remember? So might as well try to capture that curvature like this. And then it's a sharp point, so we don't need to continue the loop. We just continue this up. And as we get to the to the point right there, I I do want to have like a nice little point. So we're gonna like try to make this continue. I'm gonna press shift or tab here to just extrude this, and there we go. Here we have a triangle. Is it bad? As we've mentioned before, triangles are not bad, but if you want to like remove it, we can just do something like this, and it creates a nice flow here on the topology. And again, as, uh, as I've mentioned before, I really like this uh, this thing that we do. I, I really like, like topology because it allows you to, to understand how models work. So this is the topology for this particular arrow, which is pretty much the same for every arrow. So if we do one arrow, we should be able to adapt this shape very nicely. And now, uh, one of the rules here is try to keep the, the topology as like relaxed as possible. So for instance, you can see here, there's some points that are doing some weird curvatures. But that looks good. We're going to grab the whole thing, mirror on the X um, axis to get this arrow right here. Let's push it out. Center the pivot point and push this out. So that's the base of the arrow, which is going to be sitting right around there. And then it's not like I would imagine it to be like super uh, thick, to be honest. So I'm just going to control E and push this up like this. Now, to make my life a little bit easier, I'm going to delete half of this thing. And then I'm going to grab this forward or front facing uh, faces. Make sure that only the front faces right here. Let's go to the right view. And we're going to rotate them to get the inclination. Of course, we're going to push this down. And I can imagine here, we're also going to get a little bit of, a, of an inclination like this. Again, the most important one is probably this one. I don't think the arrow is going to be as thick, so I'm going to like push it in a little bit like that. And that's it. So we mirror again, 
on the x-axis. You can see the, the line is no longer uh, on the grid, so let's snap it, get it on the grid, mirror on the x-axis, and let's add some support edges to make sure that this looks good. <laughs> it seems like I added a couple of them on the back, that's fine. Let's just delete all of these faces that we don't need. And to sharpen this, I'm gonna use traditional like edge loops. So I'm gonna support one right here on the back. There we go. One on the front, one down here. And we're gonna use our mesh tools, offset edge loop to get one right there. As you can see, we get this very nice sharp effect. If we want to have a little bit more sharpness on the arrows as well, we could also add one right here, one right here, and one right there. There we go. Look at that beautiful arrow. Yeah, that's it. So now we just grab this arrow. I'm going to move the control point with the D and the V to the center of the shield. Right there. I'm going to control D, rotate this sideways. As you can see, it's right there, so it's going to be minus 90 degrees. And the only thing I might need to do with this one is just scale it down a little bit. I'm going to center the pivot point. Let's like match the shape this a little bit better. I'm, I'm going to ignore the fact that it's not like perfectly matching to the concept because I know it's perfectly matching to my shield. Of course, I'm going to push this in a little bit more. Like that. And we're going to mirror this to the world negative x-axis. There we go. We're going to grab this one right here again. Rotate this 180 degrees. And you can see again, it's a very similar like arrow. So I'm just going to center a pivot point. And I'm just going to actually, before we do that, I'm just going to push the the point to the to the very bottom there and then grab all of the vertex. And push them all the way back scale them up a little bit i'm gonna flatten this a little bit more you can see that the curvature of this part of the of the arrow is not as intense so i'm gonna start just like playing around with this guys until we get the the shape that's a little bit closer to what we have there we go you can see there's a lot of stretching here that's where we need to add a couple of edge loops to help support the, the whole shape, otherwise uh, we could get some texture stretching later on, okay, which we don't particularly want. And that's it. We get the whole shield ready. I'm not super fond of uh, this like overlap right there, to be honest. I think we could have done a better way, but it's not bad for 40 minutes that we've been modeling. So uh, probably if I was doing this for production, I might have separated this part right here and joined it with this thing so that it flowed uh, nicely. But again, I think this is a good um, compromise for, for the time. So I'm going to, for this sort of like speed run uh, modeling. So that's pretty much it. And now the last thing that I want to do is I'm going to grab the whole thing right here. I'm going to combine it into a single object. And here's the, the final trick that I'm going to show you. We're going to bend it a little bit because usually shields have a little bit of a bend. They're not perfectly flat. So I'm going to go here to deform, nonlinear, and then bend. And I'm going to use the curvature, a little bit of curvature. And I'm going to rotate that thing, the little bend curve. 90 degrees like that, and then 90 degrees to the back. And as we push the curvature, as you can see here, we're going to be able to bend the whole thing. And that's why we had to model everything the way we modeled it, because if we had gone very low poly, then this vent would have given us a very weird approach. Now, of course, this curvature is way, way too much. So I'm going to go, I think, I think 30 degrees is, is a good number. That looks like a, like a nice round shield that you can like get on your arm without the, maybe even less, maybe like 20 degrees, to be honest. Now let's go 25, 25 degrees. And once we're happy, we just add the history and the deformer is going to be gone. And there you go. We have just modeled a medieval shield for, this would be like for a commercial, for film or something. You could even 3D print this, of course. This is not for games. The topology is, is quite heavy. You can see we're like quarter of a million polygons for this thing right here. Um, but this subdivision modified or subdivision um, 
like prepared a shield is ready for your collection. So that's it, my friends. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do a like a texture pass on this thing and show you the whole process towards Unreal. And um, if you want me to explain any of the points throughout this video, also let me know in the comments. Again, remember that we have our Discord channel. And if you want to learn a little bit more about uh, the uh, process of modeling, we also have a premium course in Blender where a lot of these techniques are also explained so that you can create am amazing assets. So make sure to check the description there for the link as well. I think that's pretty much it. I'll see you back on the next one, my friends. And thank you very much for being part of this amazing community. Bye-bye.